Hello, I'm Jerry Roman and welcome back to my channel. In yesterday's video, I covered the top six undervalued stocks and five of the six were in the energy sector. When we look at the sectors for yesterday, energy was the big winner and it closed up 2.78%. In the last month, energy stocks have taken a real beating and most YouTubers are giving vague market videos with very few talking about hot stocks or sectors. I try to give you the hot stocks that I'm looking at right now. And check out how yesterday's stocks performed. TDC up 6.45%. Arch up 6.39%. And while this wasn't covered in the video, I did cover it in my Discord. Matador was up 5.08%, MGY up 2.78%, CTRA up 2.58%, and COP was up 2.24%, and AMD was down 1.06%. While nobody can tell you to the day when stocks are going to pop, it's always nice when it happens and it coincides with my videos. I'm still very bullish on energy stock, and you saw the crazy gains yesterday. And if you missed yesterday's video, check it out and you'll see why these stocks are undervalued, why I'm not surprised to see them up over 5% in one day, and why I think they will reach new highs this year. And that brings us to today's video on bank stock. With interest rates rising, bank stocks should be going up in value because of the increased profits, but so far all of the major stocks are sucking wind this year. While there are a few outliers that have been doing well, we currently have a great setup to buy some profitable bank stocks at very steep discounts. And last week Warren Buffett bought 2.5 billion dollars worth of Citigroup and that's an interesting move because Citigroup is trading well below their book value and their PE ratio is about one half of the industry average. This looks like a really deeply discounted value buy for Berkshire Hathaway and Warren might have just bought Citigroup at close to a 50% discount which is absolutely crazy. Today we're going to take a close look at bank stocks and I'll show you why Citigroup looks amazing to Warren Buffett and trust me the reason will jump off the page when you see it. Plus I'm also going to show you two stocks that are already performing great this year that you can consider that are buying anytime. Smart investors like Warren Buffett are looking for buying opportunities and with Citigroup I can show you why Warren Buffett spent 2.5 billion dollars and why I'm looking to buy Citigroup as well. So is now the right time to invest? As always I like to stress that when you are buying value stocks at deep discounts you should not expect the stock price to shoot up overnight. Remember you are buying for the long term so manage your expectations and give the stock price time to catch up to the fundamentals. Let's start off the day by going over a few winning trades. We're now in my discord and you can see a few of our channels on on the left and let's go over a few recent winning trades. We've got Freaky Trout sold last of six NEO July 15th 2022 $22.50 call options for a 200% gain. Overall average 67% profit on all six. Year to date profit on NEO trades is about 12% despite a 28% drop in share price reducing cost basis by $2.88 per share. Great job Freaky Trout. We've got Tarzan sold coin for a small 5% gain because didn't feel safe holding it too long. We've got Air Tractor. Quick day trade have SSR and long as well for a 16.03% profit. We've got Beach Bums close calls on BPT for 70%, Vet for 92%, both expired on July 15th. And then we've got Thu close put option on BPT for 61% gain, a 10% gain on the BPT stock. We'll definitely buy BPT back when it pulls back tomorrow. Great job Thu. And then we've got Moosman 95, good profit on CYTK and here we can see they ripped an 11.01% profit, not too shabby on a down day in a down market. My Discord is all about helping people make money and if you want all of our live trading alerts on stocks, options, and crypto, then come join our community. It's a tremendous value and you see the results we're getting every day. All right, now's the time to grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. We're now at beastmodeanalysis.com and if you want to run your own fundamental analysis you can do so at this website. The link is down below. So let's jump into our side-by-side -side comparison which is my favorite way to look at stocks in the sector. Today we're going to be looking at JP Morgan Chase, ticker JPM, Bank of America, ticker BAC, Wells Fargo and Company, WFC, Citigroup, ticker C, and all of these are some of the biggest banks we've got in the U.S. markets and these guys are all down this year. And then at the far right we've got Bank First Corporation, ticker BANF, and Amalgamated Financial, AMAL. These are two banks that are actually doing well this year. The first thing I want to point out is the market cap size. Our first four, these guys are really big. We've got JPM at $344.5 billion, and we've got Citigroup at $92.9 billion, and then our last two, they're considerably smaller. Next, let's take a look at the stock performance, and here we can see the different PE ratios, and the lower the better, and the beast mode is broken down with cheat sheets, so we've got a down arrow which tells us we want 
want a lower number. And if you need to know what anything is, you just simply hover over the eye and a pop-up will show up and tell you exactly what that metric is all about. And the first thing we noticed is that Citigroup has a very low PE ratio at 5.1, which is almost half of the industry average. We can see JPM is at 8.1, BAC is at 8.4, and then our two smaller banks, they're a little bit higher. And the next thing we've got is the PS ratio, and this is the price to sale ratio. And the lower that number, the better. And here we can see Citigroup is also very low at 1.3. Now, I just got back from my India trip last week and I'm still fighting a cold, so bear with me as I try to get through this. Next up, we've got the income statement and this tells us whether or not the companies are making money. And the first line here is the total revenue and you'll notice we've got some different blank lines or an NAN and that just means that there's no value. And the reason why is because of the accounting rules, banks are not required to report these fields, so it's nothing wrong and it's just that the banks aren't reporting these numbers. But what we do like to look at is the net income margin and here we can see banks have an exceptionally high net income margin. Our winner on the day is JP Morgan at 39.72. We also have Bank of America at 35.88%. And then we've got BANF at an impressive 34.51%. Wells Fargo is 27.45% and Citigroup is 30.53%. Next up, we're going to look at the per share data, and this allows us to compare important per share data between companies, and this is where Citigroup really starts to look interesting for Warren Buffett. Let's go ahead and start with the EBITDA per share ratio. We'll hover over that and explain what it is. EBITDA is essentially net income or earnings with interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization added back. EBITDA can be used to analyze and compare profitability among companies and industries as it eliminates the effects of financing and capital expenditures, and here we can see the higher that number, the better, and the first thing that jumps out is Citigroup is the winner in this category coming in at 0.32 and we can see it is considerably higher than our other big banks and even our two smaller banks. Next up we can look at the revenue per share ratio and this is an important item because the revenue per share computes the total revenue earned per share over a designated period. It is calculated by dividing the total revenue by the average total shares outstanding. Now we could look at the revenue per share but this is really deceptive because share prices vary. One stock could be trading at $10, another other stock could be trading at $200. So that's why we like to look at the revenue per share ratio. And again, Citigroup is jumping off the page at 0.73. And you can see it's more than double many of the other top banks. The balance sheet tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable. And here I like to look at what I call the tattle ratio because it tattles on the company's overall strength. Now we always want this number to be above one and banks will typically be just above that number. So here we can see where all of the numbers are coming in and our strongest on the day is Bank First Corporation at 1.14 and everybody else is in a pretty tight range. So nothing really jumps off the page in this section. Now let's take a look at the key performance metrics. These are all very insightful to a company's overall condition, and this is where Citigroup really starts to jump off the page. What we're looking for is a lot of black and blue, and what we don't want to see is red. So our first one is the revenue growth last year. The higher that number, the better, and we can see that Citigroup actually went down 4.77% on their revenue growth, but after that, everything looks great. The free cash flow margin is 79.73%. The rule of 40 indicator is the best out of any of the bank's talks at 74. 96%, my FNR indicator, and this simply sums up the free cash flow, the net income margin, and the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The higher that number, the better. And again, Citigroup is our hands down winner. And then we've got the book value ratio, and anything above one means we're actually buying it below the book value. And the book value ratio is 1.87. So if we scroll up, we can see the book value per share is 89.62. And then if we scroll up and we look at Citigroup's last close, it was at $47.86. So this is what Warren Buffett is seeing where he is able to buy Citigroup well below the book value and that's why he bought so much of it in conjunction with everything else that we've already covered. And now let's just sum up why Citigroup is looking so good. First off, we've got the book value ratio at 1.87. And then we come up and we can see the book value per share is 89.62. And the current stock price is much lower at 47.86. So we're able to buy this at a very severe discount. Next up, we've got our PE ratio 5.1, which is considerably lower than the rest of the industry. And then we also have the price to sales ratio, which is also very low and about half that of the other competitors. And now when we scroll down to look at the net 
income margin. We can see all of these companies are similar, yet Citigroup is trading at a significant discount on both the book value, the PE ratio, and the price to sales ratio. So this is why Citigroup is my hands down winner of the day. If you're looking to buy a deeply discounted stock for the long term, and if you are looking for some bank stocks that are already performing well, you definitely want to check out Bank First Corporation, ticker BANF, which has been performing great this year, and you'll see that on the charts as well. And now let's take a quick look at the analyst ratings for Citigroup on tipranks.com. We're now looking at Citigroup on tipranks. We can see the closing price was $47.83, and the analyst rating consensus has it rated as a moderate buy with 11 ratings, six are buy, five are hold. We've got an analyst price target of $65.27, giving it an upside of 36.46%. And we've got a high price target that's almost double the current price at $93. And one other thing I want to point out here is if we come over over to the dividends tab, we can see they currently have a dividend yield of 4.26% and they have been paying steady dividends. So that's also an extra benefit of owning this stock. Definitely something to consider. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you want to learn how to read charts, trade options, receive our hot stock watch list, use my custom indicators, or get all of our trading alerts, the links are in the description down below. We're still in a very volatile market, so be careful and trade smart. Peace, and I'll see you on the next video.